Michael F. Sherry and Sr. saw an opportunity in being able to send strings through the mail to a mailing list. Nobody had done it before. Well, Dad always said that, you know, I worked all my life very hard, you know, but I found my biggest success after I was retired. The origin of Shar came from strings. There was no way to get very high quality European made strings in the United States. And so the Afsharians started that. It was Charles Afsharian, I believe, and Michael Afsharian. And they started importing strings from Germany. Nobody had done it before. Right around that time, I was in Oklahoma, and one of my students had uh, told me about how he was getting these strings, like half the price of what the stores were charging. I said, how can that be? He said, well, I've, uh, I have a friend of mine who was a violinist who was in the Seventh Army Symphony. And while he's over there, everybody there would buy their strings, you know, locally in, in Germany where they make them. And so that's where everything started, the idea of buying and selling strings. Well, Charlie got a hold of that idea and decided he was going to get these strings and sell them to the Symphony, Philadelphia Sym Symphony Orchestra members. So if you buy the strings, you know, roughly half price of retail, and they'd go to the symphony rehearsals and sell it to them for 30% discount. So he still had something left for himself. One time Dad went with Charlie when they went to uh, the rehearsal at intermission to sell strings, and Dad sat and watched that, and, and of course, he right away, something clicked in his mind. He says, well, if he can sell strings to Philadelphia orchestra players, we ought to be able to sell them to anybody in the country. His basic common sense for taking care of a customer, that was a key issue, still is. In the early days of Char, when we were working out of the house, that was the start in the, in the basement of the coal bin, that's where Char started. That's where the stock room was. And his bedroom was the office. We park at this neighborhood house. And I thought, why are we here? He said, well, this is where you get your string supplies. I said, what is this? He said, oh, you don't know Mr. Afsheri? And I said, nope, I do not. So we walked in and there was this little tiny shop in this house, in a residential house. And that was my introduction to, to Shar music. We would send out mailings. He'd have to get a mailing list. And then he'd get the neighborhood kids. They'd come around the dining room table and their job was to stuff envelopes. In the early days, um, you always, your mindset was you go into a store to physically buy something. But Char changed that, and now all of a sudden, didn't take very long, this is even, you know, of course, way pre-internet, but, um, but just even on the phone, you could get it in a couple of days. Orders started coming in, you know, for some days you say, well, I got an order today, you know, and then a few days, I got another order, and now all of a sudden, I got 12 orders. You can imagine, except for him especially, because all his life, you know, he's struggling and trying to make a buck. In my childhood, it was simply the perfect place to find strings, shoulder pads, cases, all those kinds of things. And in the, in the 40 years since then, it has expanded to be one of the most uh, important uh, supply houses and instrument houses in the country, and internationally now. Sure, had gotten to the point where Dad said, I'm going to have to have some executive help here, you know, it's too much for me on myself. I told him I'd come back. For me, it was the excitement of the business and getting back to Ann Arbor with the folks, they're getting older. You know, we were a very close family. Charlie was still dubious about quitting Michigan, you know, it was such a good job. And, but finally, he joined us then. My brother, my father, myself, we would all have meetings, so forth. But they got rather heated, so finally my mother would forbid any meetings, the business in the house. <laughs> and through good management, you know, Dad and, and Charlie, the, the uh, Shar prospered and we did well, and we, we continued to be the leader. With my father's uh, common sense and determination to go against the big boys, he was cut off too. Our company was cut off by a major supplier. So now Dad was up against the wall, and he said, "Well, this is not right. The American way, you know, you can't, you can't do that. Free trade, you know." He made arrangements to go to the senator. Michigan had the two senators. There's one senator, Hart, 
and he was he happened to be somebody who was interested in trust busting and and monopolies and this kind of thing so from his office they sent a letter to to this kingpin guy you know and you said you know cease and desist you sell to sharp products or you are going to be a face a lawsuit from the united states government Obviously, they agreed, <laughs> don't we all? So they finally broke their ban, and they said, okay, we'll tell to you. And that was, that was the end of all those problems. I think in 1971, we moved to a, uh, about a 10,000 square foot building on Platte Road. And then in 1978, we moved to a 28,000 square foot building here, where we are, industrial which at the time just seemed huge, it was. I mean, several times as big, and we even considered renting out space, you know, which we didn't. It's a good thing because very soon, that wasn't big enough. We had to build a warehouse, and then that wasn't big enough. We had a second warehouse. So Char sits on 50,000, limited by zoning rules. And now we had to even off-site storage places. I think that my grandfather created it, you know, and and got it going, but then it really needed another level. And then my dad came in and just, you know, really brought his vision and drive. And with Mike, the two of them balanced each other out, I think, perfectly. Now, if I could have seen this when we were back at the house, I would have probably fallen over, fainted. It is a company, but it's got some warmth in people's hearts. And, and, uh, and I take pride in that, I think, and that's part of the longevity. And, treating people right and staying relevant. His greatest dream was being a successful businessman. And he, he realized that while he was still alive, so I was always really happy to see that.